Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm gonna do a special reading today. I'm gonna do the Lionsgate portal reading. Um, I don't know that I've actually ever done one before. I think it's often, a lot of times, I'm actually on holiday. <laughs> Lionsgate portal. So I wasn't this time and I woke up this morning and I'm like I have lion's mane hair so um I thought maybe I should maybe I'll do one and um it's not really talked about well I know maybe it is talked about I don't really see it talked about though it doesn't mean it's not happening <laughs> you know there's lots of things going on out there that I don't see um but this is kind of like astrologically speaking it's um it is a powerful time because Leo's the sun transits um, in Leo with the star Sirius and it creates I guess it creates a really powerful spiritual energy and for me anyways I see it as energy that sort of gets very specifically directed and the spirit affects the physical. To me, that's like that's how I really, I really feel that energy. So what I thought I was gonna do in this reading is I'm gonna focus on. Um, I have my star seed deck, and I have my. Um, sorry, I'm fighting his knees. <coughs> fighting his knees for like the last two minutes. Anyways, there we're clearing clearing out the energies. Um. All right, <laughs> clear out my mind here. Oh, wow. I love the pre-shuffle of this already. This I just feel like this is going to be interesting. Because like I say, I swear to God, I think I've always been on vacation when this is happening. I'm like, I'm not. Let's see what we do. Lifting the veil. I've pre-shuffled this. It's, it's kind of funny, right? Lifting the veil. I don't know about any of you, but I do find this time of year, um, just coming up to the Lionsgate portal, my dreams become like really lucid, really lucid and um, vivid and easy to remember, more so than usual. This underline is very interesting. It's the breath of the cosmos. My will to thy will, micromanaging the universe. I just want to say like that just kind of gives me the feeling right now. Um, in this energy, looking at this card, what we're talking about of the butterfly effect and how every one of us are connected and are changing and co-creating with one another and with spirit in that card and it's almost like it's just kind of really magnifying that idea for it for us the cosmic heart devotion potency make your life a moving prayer isn't that interesting because that just feels like manifestation so i'm kind of picking up that this is a powerful it is. It is. I've been shown that. It's a very powerful time right now. I don't know if it's more so than other years. I actually want to say maybe. Now, I have a south node in Leo, so I don't know if it, if people are affected perhaps differently in terms of, um, you know, what their, their Leo or fifth house placement, your sun placements are, what your sun is in, um, or what house that is sitting into at the time of birth. But I actually, I have noticed I've been manifesting stuff like in some, in one case I manifested something within 15 minutes and I was stopped and I thought, well, I thought that would be a good thing to have, but I don't need that right now. <laughs> so I just keep, I kept walking. It was actually really crazy that one. That was um, it's a very specific example. I was walking, I was taking Lily for a walk. This was yesterday? Was it yesterday morning or two mornings ago? I can't remember. It was very recent. But that's what I feel like. This energy is actually kind of like it's coming towards us. It's building or almost like it's just kind of opening. It's like a door, right? Like it's like. So this is a very powerful time right now. Probably a really good time to do any type of intentions, um, any type of spiritual, magical work that you do as well. Even leading up to it and really seeing what happens on today. But I just feel like today for me is just a really, um, the energies are really nice. It's almost like an open communication between uh, the spiritual realm and the physical. But leading up, yeah, just walking Lily, it was yesterday morning maybe. And um, there's a house that's kind of on a corner so you can see into their backyard a bit too. And they had beautiful vegetable garden. And they were utilizing um, old wooden pallets. I can't remember exactly what they were doing with them. At the time I thought, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> Anyways, so, so I'm walking back home with Lily, and what has somebody put out on the curb but wooden palace? 
<laughs> I stopped and I was. I thought, I think I just manifested that because I just I walked past that area to start Lily on her walk, and that was about maybe 40, 45 minutes prior to coming back again. And then seeing that and doing it, I was like, oh. And then there was something else too. So I can't remember what the other thing was. And I stopped myself. I'm like, hey, wait a second. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, so yeah, there's that. <laughs> there's the manifestation. And I thought to myself after I did the palettes though, I thought, why can't I manifest the winning lottery numbers? <laughs> so, okay, weight of the world, boundaries let it go it's not yours to carry see oh it's oh that's kind of giving me a, a a very interesting energy about this particular portal right now this is releasing burdens releasing the weight it's almost like the portal is taking stuff more more so than just opening up and giving it's re it's receiving the portal is coming out is as, as being very receptive very receptive to what you are communicating beyond this space and time. But also burdens, weight, heavy energies. And lifting the veil. I love that, that and that's how it ends, right? Lifting the veil, seeing through the other side. Questioning everything. Some of you may be questioning some things in your life. You may have been going through a period of questioning things. Anything that's not aligned must go. Just like that. That's it. All right, so I was, I was going to tell you what I was going to do here. So I'm going to focus on very much like the astral energetic uh, aspect of this portal through the reading here on YouTube. I'm going to be using, like I said, I'm going to be using the Starseed deck and I'm going to be using the um, Moonology deck here. Have faith in your dreams. Well, that's beautiful, isn't it? As an underlying too. It's just the one in the pre-shuffle underlying. So have faith in your dreams. Lift the veil and have faith. Well, I like that. Um, what I'm going to do, I am going to do an extended. Um, I won't talk about that too much now because not everybody's going to be interested in that. But I'm going to go into the fairy deck for the extended. And I want to look at things more of like in the physical sense, how it affects physical things around us and what kind of energies are being activated. What kind of energies, physical energies, particularly fairies, are being activated in this. In this, this is all about the spiritual and the, um, the energetic realm. So... I feel like we've already started it with this. And yeah. I just feel like, yeah, I got the, the lion's mane. Did I never know how I'm going to wake up with it? Because I tie it up, right? To go to sleep, I get tangled otherwise. So I tie it up. And then, you know, depending on how it releases. And this is what I thought. Oh, I woke up with lion's mane this morning. That must be a sign. Okay. The Lionsgate portal, this one, 2024. Show us the energies, show us the, it just split into two. This slid off first and then this fell off to the other side. I'm gonna look at them, I'm not going to, I'm not gonna judge or even try to, you know, kind of guess what each side represents but I'm kind of feeling like one is maybe the energy that the portal is is like receiving and the other is what the portal is giving so let's see what this is on this side the star brothers Horus energy protection loyalty safety and trust so Horus energy is coming through here quite specifically the seas of Mantaka Seeing potential, bringing unconsciousness to light. So, okay, that's kind of obviously that's... Just a second. Now, something's being activated in the water. Something's happening in water. What else is here? Is there other... Oh, God, I love it. Serious energy. What were you just talking about? The star series, creating powerful energetic pathways, bringing harmony and balance. Something's being balanced in the water. And I'm going to say, um, I know I'm not, my intention is not to specifically reach into sort of like the physical and the um, 3D world in this part of the reading, but I'm definitely getting something going on with the oceans here. So this is not just an activation for us. There's something being activated in the ocean.
very interesting. I'm getting that there's something going on with this portal that has something to do more with Earth and not to look at it as like an egotistical human being, that this is not just about us. There's something very profound going on on the planet right now. There's a healing. There's some type of healing. There's something even more important than like, you know, just your human experience here. There are other souls on this planet that are suffering. This feels very much like it's coming through to me, like the animals and the wildlife on this planet. Even here, like just even seeing the birds. Okay, this is coming through very interesting here. And then we have fallen to my arms, surrender, holding office. It's extremes of life. There's something here. This is indirectly affecting us. This is like healing us, but through something else. Something else here on the planet is being healed. When that is healed, it will affect us in a very positive way. That's how this is coming across. That's what's coming in here. So I again, I didn't want to sort of try to even guess why do I have two piles here? Maybe this isn't even about the energy that's being received and the energy that's being given. This feels like a much larger message if I just let it come out. Because it honestly, it feels like whatever is being done in the waters, in the oceans, the waters, it's not just a purification, something, there's some type of DNA activation that it's occurring in the waters. Like, like at a microorganism level here, because through the microorganism, everyone will receive this. And then it ends with the blue flame. Oh, spontaneous awakening, activation, integration time. Wow, that's really cool. So no, this is the most significant thing that is happening or has been happening because it's kind of building up to this, right? is that there's something that is some type of healing energy, some type of frequency, a type of, it's an, I'm right, it's bringing unconsciousness to light. That's the purpose, but it's literally, I feel like it's microorganism level. And it is, it's literally serious. I think that's just so brilliant. That, that actually came out here. It is. It's literally serious energy. And it's affecting water. Not just the... It feels very much like the oceans. Yeah, it is. I mean, myself, I'm kind of landlocked here in Ontario. But we have a lot of, like, you know, right, lakes. So I would want to say, oh, yeah, you're doing that to the lakes too. But I'm not... I'm hearing that what goes to the oceans goes to everything. It all finds its way to you. What goes to the oceans goes to everything. This is going to the oceans to go to everything. It's sort of kind of beautiful, isn't it? I mean, it's almost as if, I'm wondering if this is something that has happened before. If this is a way of getting some type of healing subconscious information, DNA activation to everything on the planet. Get it into the microorganisms in the sea. Kind of making me feel like too, um, fall into my arms, surrender, holding the opposites, extremes of life, and then a spontaneous awakening I think there's going to be, now, I'm, I'm here, okay, yeah, I'm hearing this is no more than what would normally happen, um, and it's not anything that wasn't going to happen, so, okay, I gotta put, it's almost like a disclaimer before I say what I'm gonna say, because there's going to be people that have near-death experiences, and the, like, it's like all of them. After this point, after this micro, it's like the microorganisms. That's how it gets into us. 
and this spontaneous awakening like people are waking are going more people are waking up in this but there's something about near death experiences for people moving forward it becomes an intense activation it's and it's right like because it has activation and integration but it feels like that's exactly what they're doing there it's almost like it's activating whatever has happened now okay near death is also i want to think about death like um was that is it a french term i'm not getting the french what is the french uh phrase for it like tiny death isn't that what it's called it's like when you go to sleep at night because it's kind of like that right like you lose consciousness So at any point when you're kind of like losing consciousness here is when things start to be activated. That this is something that's taking time, right? Because if you think about like, I don't even know how long it would take a microorganism in the ocean right now, the one that's destined for you through the body of another could be fast. Some of this is, could be like, you know, um, a tuna or something that has consumed another fish that consumed a microorganism. And then right, like this is how it all gets to us. Or... Um, it could even be like even some people, people who are vegetarian, it's still going to get to you because people are still going to use fish and other uh, fish bones. Like I'm just seeing this, like I'm really seeing the system of earth here and how it's being utilized in a very intelligent way. It's like all of that eventually becomes compost or it will become compost. It all moves through everything. Um, fascinating, no? Okay, well, let's. What is this pile? Empathic starseed, energetic sovereignty, absorbing what's not yours. Well, water your garden, nourishment, body care, tenderness, and rest. Well, oh, there's quite a few here. All paths lead home. Inner authority, intuition, turn your gaze within. Forge, don't follow. Pave a new path, be the leader you wish you had. And then Earth School, Life Lessons, Soul Growth, Study Higher Learning. Why did this fall? Okay, well, let's talk about that. The Empathic Star Seed. I feel like, okay, I am going to add the Moonology deck to both these little areas. All right, okay, you know what I'm getting? I'm getting that these were divided into two because this is showing us sort of how it's all like in a very holistic and vast um interpretation of what's happening right like kind of like across the planet and then this becomes the personal and this feels very personal this has a very this just feels like you in your own body here right like in these images too like it feels like you know like she's holding herself and then this woman is just walking on her own um through the maze and again th like there's a this pile has l like the personal identity area where this is like we already have over here this strong external energy that's coming through and then showing us the oceans which is just like everything and everyone right so this is that's what this is that's why this is divided into two so this area here is the energy of the cosmos and exactly sort of how it is working through the planet and then this is you here so it starts with being an empathic star seat. There you go. If you've come to this reading, I want to say that you're getting clarification that you are a star seed, whatever that means. <laughs> I want to say it. I don't know. To me personally, I feel like we're all star seeds. We've all we have to be. <laughs> we're all we've all come from the stars, every one of us. But um empathic. So let's say that. You absorb energies that are not yours. So this is a good time to let, what if I say? It wants to take burdens. It wants to take energy. Do that. Allow it to take because when things are removed, new things can be accepted. Energetic sovereignty, absorbing what's not yours. So what is it telling us? Bathe in the water. <laughs> to the water. Get into the water and bathe in it. Cleanse yourselves. Maybe some of you, this is Epsom salt baths. Um, some of you, you could have access to uh, fresh... Yeah, even like um, streams and rest. It's interesting. It's not like go out and go surfing or, 
you know, go out and go for a long swim. This is just soak yourself and relax. Soak yourself and relax to remove what is not yours. Because there's something new to be absorbed here for you. I kind of feel like, too, this is also connecting to this integration and activation here. All roads lead home. So regardless of how far you find yourself or how close you find yourself to the outer edge or the internal, um, the, the inner portion of this, what would you call it? I guess it's a path. It looks a bit like a maze or a labyrinth to me. Look within and you'll find where you need to go. But you have to remove what's not yours. Some of you, this is physical, like this is defining a physical space to give yourself the space and time to detach from, from, from drama, from other people, from outside energies and reconnect with yourself. But you have to reconnect with yourself. There's things here that you have to remove. I'm I'm seeing something really interesting here. Like I'm I'm getting kind of like a DNA activation with this. This also gets me kind of monolith. Which which deck is that? I'm seeing it's the moon card. I can't remember which deck it is. And it's the two monoliths that come up out of the water. Oh. That's interesting. When's the next full moon? Oh, I have the moon cycles here. When's the next full moon? We're at a waxing crescent now. Feels like it's going to be a while, no? It is going to be... Getting there on... There we go. August the 20th. It will be 100% full. Again, this is telling me this from where I live. So, um... And... Oh, whoa, it's going to be... Um, in Pisces, a full moon in Pisces. So that's very interesting because, oh, that's crazy, actually. <laughs> what deck is that? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of you, like, so I know some of you religiously watch everything I do. And some of you do that in a really good way. And some of you do that in a bit of a creepy way. Um, what deck is that? I can't remember. But I'm seeing the monoliths come out and the moon is centered. So there's something that's going to be activated on August 20th that's kind of being like seeded right now. It's being seeded right now and it's in the oceans. And there's monoliths. I think there's monoliths down in the bottom of the ocean. They're being seeded. So that I want to say you could like introduce a practice until um, leading up to August 20th for this full moon to clear your energy. This is so this is a very specific reading. I kind of love this. So maybe I should not be on holidays. <laughs> um, because it's really telling you to prepare yourself, get rid of what's not yours, make a, a, a specific practice if you can to clear your energies and you know I've said it is is being suggested here through water I want to say through grounding too she is walking barefoot on the ground here I feel like that is a very natural way to cleanse oneself because our feet are where we actually remove uh, a lot of toxins so if you're always connected to something man-made you're it's not Right? And earth, though, I, like the ground is very absorbent, very receptive. So you're getting water. You're getting grounding through your feet. Now, this is all going to help you internalize more. Become more focused on yourself and what your true path is. And to remove what's mis misaligning you or misguiding you, right? Because the waters are being seeded. The monoliths are coming up. And I, f I love that that's a full moon in Pisces. That just feels perfect. The moon card being Pisces card in the tarot and seeing those monoliths. That just feels like it's confirming something for me. Okay, forge don't follow. Pave a new path. Be the leader you wish you had. Um, 
that is very interesting. I'm actually just going to put something out there. She might be watching. It's another tarot reader, and um, she got a reading with me. And she just wanted, like, advice about her channel. And I really didn't have any to give, be well, except, um, you know, really be yourself. Really be yourself. Because, too, like, there's so many tarot channels out there now. And to stand out, it, it, not that intentionally want to stand out, but to really, truly be authentic in the best way that you can. And I feel like that's what attracts people is when there's authenticity. Because if if I'm authentic with you, then you feel like it's okay to be authentic with yourself, right? And the, the, you, we, it's just, it's a nice feeling. <laughs> it's a nice feeling, right? But, the, and that's kind of like what this is. I'm just, that's just kind of coming to mind here. And it is like, don't be afraid to be a little bit different. Don't be afraid to go in the direction you you would have loved to see someone else go or because it does say right like that you wish you had you be that person now that's very interesting too with i want to say with like leo energy in the lion's gate portal because that is um, if you think of um the male lion which is the symbol of Leo. It is forging a path. It is going out there. It is having confidence. It is being the leader that nobody else is going to be here. Um, so forge this path. Once you've, but see, because when you turn your gaze within, after you remove the energies that are not yours, that are affecting your, your direction, your intention, you remove that, you look within, and then you will, it's almost like it's saying you'll find your path. You'll start moving in the right direction. Now, this direction may be very different to others, but this is also telling me that you won't be afraid to go there because you won't be influenced by other energies. And then there you go. Earth school. Gosh, it's like they're diving in. Well, what's that? But no, it's like the cosmos. Life lessons, soul growth, study, higher learning. This is like not being afraid to go where you've never gone before and learn what you've never known, <laughs> really. And to grow, to really, truly grow, to expand beyond where you are. Higher ideals. Yeah, oh, what's at the bottom of all of this? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's interesting. That's so fascinating. Look at that. This is really giving me that other energy, right? That I felt like the portal was like absorbing. It's receiving from us. Forgiveness. Asking for forgiveness. Writing past wrongs. Uprooting. But that almost feels like realizing that you've You've maybe betrayed yourself or betrayed what your true path is here. Forgiving yourself in that. Having been lost. And this is like finding yourself. Shut up. All right. Let's see. What is the moonology energy around these? So I kind of like when there's a, like kind of like a little practical um, advice in a reading like this. And it is kind of to make you aware. I feel like this has been fascinating, this whole process of this Horus energy and Sirius energy are specifically what are putting in now protection, loyalty, safety, and trust. And then bringing harmony Okay, that's what's coming through with Horus energy. Protection, loyalty, safety, and trust. And maybe this is, um, it almost feels like something that gets sort of impregnated into the DNA of microorganisms. And this becomes, it's almost like, it's reminding me of like a moon. It's not funny, like a, a mood. A mood ring and it's 
like you ingest this and you kind of yourself become a mood ring and as does everyone else and then you start aligning with other mood rings right so it's not just to automatically assume loyalty safety and trust within other people and other groups and that you're protected in those relationships it is like aligning you it's showing me like a, a mood ring And that's part of what this unconscious light and activation is. So then the serious energy, right, is bringing harmony and balance. But that feels like it too. It's almost like aligning with those that are truly on your on the same path that you resonate with. Didn't people used to do that with the mood rings? That they used to do that. You say, oh yeah, look at we're soulmates. Our colors <laughs> same. It is kind of like that. So right. So that's what the that's what the cosmos, specifically again, Sirius and Horus are doing with um, the lion's gate and it is going into the oceans at a microorganism level because by doing that every being on the planet will receive this and it's going to I, I feel like there is something very specific here about people who from that this that point forward um I guess even like post Lionsgate portal. Any type of near death experience, even um, just a, even in sleep, like where you hit a point of unconsciousness, unconscious awareness, you go into the subconscious. There's spontaneous activation taking place. This activation is going to be more powerful the more that you create energetic sovereignty for yourself here. And I do feel like it's kind of showing you, like, you know, make an effort towards this up until, you know, well, it'd be not, even if you did that up until August 20th, it's almost something if you've started to make a habit to do something and it's really beneficial for you, for your mental health, for your physical health, for your energetic health, try to keep doing it. And then this is going to actually help you reconnect with yourself on a deeper level here and be able to turn your gaze within and lead your path, the path that you're meant to be following. All right go right nice practical practical um yeah and the monoliths are rising up out of the ocean on august 20th if i live near the no i was told there you won't find them <laughs> they're hidden okay i remember what deck that is cardinal moon be bold and make the force move. Is the energy coming out with that, which is very interesting. Cardinal moon. Is Leo a cardinal sign? No way I'm thinking that. They're fixed, right? It's been a long time since I've even thought about that. This energy over here. Oh my God, I love it. It's time to release negativity, full moon in Scorpio. That's exactly what this is all about, like reclaiming your energetic sovereignty. What are the things that you fear the most? Are these fears rational? Are these fears based on how other people around you have reacted, uh, you know, growing up or just generally in life and around us, the things that people worry about? Are you taking on other people's stress and worries? What negative influences are around you at this time? It's actually really asking you to, you know, to really make a conscious assessment of these things. And for some of you, that is like defining boundaries for yourself with some people in some places, as well as the water, the grounding, can you show me the energy between both of these? Oh, I love it. Step out of your comfort zone, North Node. That's really beautiful. That's the energy that sits between this. So it is, it's directing you to your North Node. It's directing all of us towards our North Node. To right? To, to pave a new path, to go in a direction you've not gone in before. 
and to learn everything that there is to learn there. It's almost like this is something that's been waiting for someone to get in and do it. Like for some of you, it could be, it could be a new place that you, you learn about. It could be um, a new hobby that you create. It could be a, a new medium that you're using in something. It could be a new way of approaching, uh, like, I'm just kind of seeing like somebody having a, a schedule for their day even. Like, it's doing something in a way that it's never been done before. Honestly feels like completely original and grassroots kind of energy. But we've got to get rid of the negativities and the fears. Well, that's interesting. We have void, of course, at the bottom. I'm sorry. Nothing will come of this. Well, that's very interesting. Very interesting. The underlying. Writing past wrongs and uprooting. Nothing will come of that situation. Defenselessness. I kind of like that nothing will come of that. Writing past wrong. How do you write? If something is in the past, it's in the past. All you can do, if there's something that you feel that you've done incorrectly in the past, is just to do things right now. Just to be now. Uprooting. It's interesting that nothing will come of this situation. I don't know if that's something very specific for someone who's almost feeling like, I want to move, I want to go somewhere else, because... That'll make things right. No. It's, it's really honestly coming through. The thing that makes it right is you finding it right inside of yourself. It's not something that you can physically leave. Oh, and there he is. There he is. That pushy cat. You coming for the Lionsgate portal? Oh, there's Larry. But you got to show them your face. Show them your beautiful face, Larry. I don't want to see the bum. <laughs> There, Larry. Hi. No, I'm gonna. He's gonna be a cat. And he's gonna do his own thing. He's not gonna do what I want him to do. I'm like, no way, honey. No way. So that's a very beautiful energy for our first Lionsgate portal. And yeah, I'm gonna go do the extended. And in the extended, I am gonna start with the uh, Brian Froud's fairy deck. I'm going to go there and because I want to kind of see what's going on, like um, physical magic, uh, physical energies sort of around us, how that's playing out in the physical around us is what we're going to do with that. So thank you, everyone. Until next time, be gentle with yourselves. Bye.